way back in 2008, it was my job at NCIX to hawk these things. Netbooks. These were a big push from Intel and their partners, with the idea being that they were tiny little laptops with really long battery life and enough performance for net-like tasks like web browsing. One small problem. Okay, let's do another take. Only one small problem. They were mostly shit. So, bringing us into the current year, it is 2017 and there is one company that believes they can bring the netbook back to its former glory, GPD. And this is the Pocket, which smashed its Indiegogo crowdfunding goal, raising over $3 million. But does the netbook really have a place in the modern day? The Be Quiet Pure Base 600 features a versatile design, noise insulation, and optimization for different liquid cooled radiator configurations. Learn more at the link below. All right, so rewinding everything you get in the box for your $459 if you buy it on Indiegogo, or $599, 600 US dollars if you buy it retail is right here. You get a USB Type-C cable, you get a wall wart with a Type-C plug, and you get the GPD Pocket itself. In many respects, this is actually quite similar to their last crowdfunded device, the GPD Win, which was more of like a, more of like a kind of handheld keyboardy thing with game pads on it. It was kind of like a gaming device. This one, though it has similar specs, so it's got an Atom X7 Z8750, so that is the top of the line, ultra portable two watt CPU. It's got eight gigs of RAM this time, 128 gigs of eMMC solid state storage, and it's got support for both Windows 10 and Ubuntu. Now, don't expect the world's most amazing performance, but it can run Cinebench and, I mean, lots of other day-to-day -day stuff. I mean, here, let's fire up a Chrome browser. That didn't feel too bad. Fire up Netflix. I mean, it's quad-core processor, 8 gigs of RAM. It's, it's actually fairly usable. And they've made a lot of other improvements since the uh, spiritual predecessor as well, notably in terms of build quality and display. So that's what a netbook felt like. These were like plastic cheap toys. And this one does cost a fair bit more, but, and this doesn't seem to have been unintentional. Here you get like this unibody aluminum style construction with the, uh, with the screws closing it in on the bottom there. And you get this really rigid feeling screen. The thing feels really nice in the hand. And for the display, instead of a low resolution TN, man, have these come a long way, you get a 1080p IPS seven inch display. So that's a pixel density. It looks really good. I turned it down to 150% scaling because I found that was kind of my sweet spot, but it is very, very usable even at this size compared to how much stuff you could put on before. 7,000 milliamp hour battery meant that our PC Mark battery life test came in at over five hours, which is a really impressive result for running basically full tilt all the time. Meaning that this thing, and last but not least, with all those improvements, plus the fact that they've made it truly pocket-sized, is a really different kind of device. But, there's always a but, isn't there? There are some things that time couldn't change, and that's the size of human hands. The interface could be better. So, some people will be thrilled to see the nipple return from the uh, IBM ThinkPads of yore. But this split left and right click and having them so close with this ridge here makes for not the most um, ergonomic experience unless you are really good at you know, this kind of this work if you, uh, if you catch my drift there. Also, the keyboard. I, I, I don't know how anyone managed to make a keyboard worse than a netbook. 
their previous device actually felt better because it was intended to be used with just your thumbs, whereas this sits in that awkward middle ground where it's hard to use with thumbs, but almost impossible to get your hands on. They've made some very weird changes. I didn't realize just how off it was until I tried to play a game and I put my fingers on WASD and figured out that W was way the crap over there. Like, I have some suggestions. Get rid of caps lock. Why do we need a caps lock button? Uh, move backspace up so that I don't keep hitting delete instead of backspace. That's very unnatural. Um, colon really needs to be here, but then where do you put enter? I mean, in some ways I do have ideas, but in other ways, I just don't know how you can fix this. And typing without a lot of specific training on this device is going to be a real challenge. OK, so next I want to take a look at gaming performance. But while we wait for uh, Windows Live or whatever to install, we decided to open it up and have a look at the inside. This thing is like 60% battery. So here's our, uh, here's our Wi-Fi. So there's our two antennas. There's our 2-watt CPU. Here's our 8 gigs of RAM. Always love opening this stuff up. Oh, and actually, I guess now's a good time to check out I.O. So we've got a full-sized USB 3 super speed. We've got a headphone jack. I mean, you can't take that for granted these days, my friends. We've got a micro HDMI. I'm not a huge fan of this connector, but it's better than mini, at least, in terms of fragility. And more importantly, this is really cool. We've got a USB Type-C. So that is used for charging, but it can also be used for a dongle. So something like this, where you can adapt that single port to multiple USBs, HDMI, gigabit networking. I've actually done it, and I've also tested this. You can plug your dongle, if you've got one of those ones that's made for the MacBook, into the wall, and the whole thing will charge. It'll power the dongle, your devices, and the laptop if you have a powerful enough wall wart, which is pretty freaking sick. So let's go ahead and fire up uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, shall we? Come on, you rat bastard. OK, so obviously the point of this isn't that Torchlight is the most difficult game in the world to run, but rather that for basic games, you actually can run them directly on the device itself. You can see at medium to high settings, we're actually getting about you know, 15 to 25 FPS, which is yeah, playable, but not really something that I would recommend. What I'm more into for a device like this is thanks to its use of a decent AC Wi-Fi chipset, this is what I'm more interested in. So I'm using Steam in home streaming on a gaming computer elsewhere in the office and getting an utterly seamless 1080p game streaming experience on this little portable device. Hit the buddy. No, I missed the buddy. And actually, the audio experience on the built-in speaker speakers, they seem to be a little confused themselves about, they call it a stereo speaker. But last I checked, you need two physical speakers for stereo audio. So um, yeah, it sounds like it's coming out of one part of the keyboard. The point is, it's actually reasonably loud and up to about 60, 65% volume. It's pretty distortion free. It's a very good experience, which I guess leads us to content consumption. And we're going from strength to strength here. 1080p Netflix is looking really, really sharp on this little tiny display and plays back with no dropped frames whatsoever. And it's actually, it's nice that the hinge folds back this far. It's a little bit inconvenient that it's kind of hard to access the touch controls at the very bottom, like the Windows taskbar. But in terms of like kind of sitting and watching a movie on it, Honestly, it's a, it's a pretty darn good experience. And 1080p YouTube, same thing. So you're looking at about 50% CPU usage if you're watching like a, a reasonably fast-paced video at full HD. But for me, a lot of those use cases are not that dissimilar from what you could do with uh, you know, a, a Windows-based tablet. So it becomes sort of a question of form factor and I.O. This keyboard is going to require a lot of adjustment, but the pocketability kind of gave me a, a different idea for, for how I see this. As 
something where out of desperation you might actually use it like this when you're sitting on a plane or on a or on a train or something like that but normally it's more about like taking the vast majority of the local storage you actually need like 128 gigs 8 gigs around like it's a decent little machine and being able to really carry it around with you and plug it in with a single cable solution to a desktop type display. Now it's running older Intel HD graphics, so it's like DisplayPort 1.1. So at native resolution on this ultra wide, we're running at uh, 30 Hertz or something like that. And then using an HDMI adapter here, I think we were only even able to get up to 1080p, but it is still the ability to just take it, plug it in, and be using your computer wherever you go, that is very appealing to me and enabled by USB Type-C. So I guess the real question then is, is, would you spend 459 US dollars on Indiegogo or 599 retail on it? I guess it depends on the kind of consumer you are. If you were waiting for a modern netbook, I think they've done a fantastic job. But if you think the netbook should have been buried, put in the trash, can you do it again? Oh, there's no garbage can there this time. Well then, you won't be that excited about it. That was awkward. Want to build a website, but you don't know the first thing about building websites? Well, Squarespace has got you taken care of. They've got a bunch of gorgeous templates. You just pick the one you want, and whether you're doing up something for the, you know, local knitting group, or whether you're, you know, building something for the sports team that you help coach, you can have a professional, awesome-looking website in a matter of minutes. They've got 24-7 support via live chat and email in case you run into trouble. All of the templates feature responsive design so it scales to look great on any device, even a phone, and they've got tons of great features built in. Every website comes with a free online store. Cover pages allow you to have a one-page online presence in minutes, and you can now publish content in Apple News format directly from the Squarespace blog. So head over to squarespace.com and start a trial today with no credit card required, then use offer code LTT to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit the like button. Get subscribed. Maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. While you're down there, you can check out our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which is totally awesome. And you should totally join it.